Uh, thank you very much, uh, Helen and Inga. And let me right away say that I have nothing to do with your being here today. I'm a guest, as you are. Uh, I can make no decision of this sort uh, anymore, and I'm very pleased that I was invited. I also would like to take the opportunity once again to thank the curators uh, who, of their own volition, decided to do this exhibition as a tribute. I would never have had the presumption, even though some people think I might have, I would not, <laughs> uh, to mount such an exhibition, but I'm utterly delighted with it. I was fascinated in listening to uh, the remarks made by both Helen Inga uh, about how interesting it is uh, to look at things in a retrospective way the ex post facto uh, analysis of collecting American taste and how things fall together here. It would almost appear from what both Helen and Enge have said that from the early 1960s, there was a kind of master plan to follow an American taste to make sure that there were echoes of American uh, subject matter with uh, uh, European painters and that somehow it all fell into place. I think those of you who know how collecting is done <laughs> realize the degree to which collecting is inflected by providers, uh, that is the market, and how opportunistic, opportunistic uh, it is uh, generally, and even how personal tastes are inflected and directed by the providers, especially early in uh, the American history of collecting, most of the dealers were from Europe, and the degree to which it is an American taste in opposition to a taste developed uh, across the Atlantic is something that has been studied and can still be uh, looked upon with a great deal of interest. There is no question from the point of view of philanthropy, from the point of view of public spiritedness, that the American system uh, is uh, unique in a certain sense in that a great many collectors collected for themselves, turned over their collections to institutions. Many of them who turned over their collections to institutions <coughs> were also uh, collecting in function of the institution from the start. We'll see this when Mike Hearn talks of the Douglas Dillon collection, which he never uh, formed because of a particular love of his for Chinese painting. He developed it, but he really did it for the institution. And we'll find the same with the Reitzman collection, with a great many others, where in fact it is a very close relationship of a curator with a collector, <coughs> and many collectors collect to a certain degree outside of their taste because they have a relationship uh, with the curators. You could almost say, uh, that a, a museum collection is a palimpsest of curatorial biases working with uh, individual um, collectors. I will also add one more thing, uh, which is that if you have spent as long as I have uh, more than 120 acquisitions meeting, both the session with the curators and that without, uh, in the executive session, you realize the degree to which, without even knowing it, in fact, curators, while they collect in an institutional way, thinking in terms of the collection, uh, will uh, be influenced even subconsciously by the taste of the trustees. And uh, this is something that the curators themselves may be surprised to hear, but I can tell when there is a certain degree of self-censorship and of uh, a certain questioning in their own minds, will the people interested in my department really like this work of art or not? To a certain degree, there is a certain sense of you want what it is that you present for augmentation of the collection to be approved and uh, you take into consideration the tastes uh, of the committees and a committee composed indeed uh, of those curators. So I just from the start want to say that to a certain degree there is an ex post facto quality to this and one that frankly is indeed fascinating and outside of the realm of collecting itself and that's something perhaps that can be discussed as we uh, go into the show. I think 
what makes this exhibition particularly interesting, and certainly I think to everyone here, but uh, is, is the fact that it also, uh, and I get back here to my ex post facto uh, synthetic view uh, of a moment ago, that this is an exhibition that is confusing to the public. Uh, museums have been so good at creating narratives of presenting early, middle, and late career, uh, the way that you hang your galleries in separating Europe from Asia, that suddenly this salad russe of uh, tossed salad of objects from all over the world together is something that, and I have heard, I've <coughs> had time now to kind of walk through and listen to people saying, what is this right next to that? Uh, at the same time, uh, this confusion uh, has led to a certain sense of discovery on the part of a number of people who said to me, you know, I never look at African art when I go to the Met. I go straight to the European paintings galleries or to Egyptian art, and I've discovered that this Jenny thing is really quite extraordinary. So a lot of people are, because they have to, looking at works of art that they had never thought they might look at before. So who knows, from the point of view of collecting, whether in fact the discovery of an aesthetic that may be closer to their sensibility than they might have thought might not yield collectors in different fields. So there's hope for all curators. <laughs>